Good morning, the BLM. This is Gaza Media, your number one community news outlet coming to you from downtown Huntington here in West Virginia. This is your weekly community update, and today is Saturday, November 4th, 2023, and I'm MS Kumba, your host. This morning, we'll be focusing on Legda USA community update. I will have a special guest who is a community organizer specialized in non-profit organization, capacity building, and project management. That is the CEO of the Kudu USA, the Bank Culture and Development Organization, an organization of all time in the BLM. He's he also sits in the BOT of Legda USA as the bank founder representative, and his name is Terence Atem, who is at the helm of the Kudu USA for a second term. We will be exploring his skill, talent, and how that will benefit the Agenda 28 of Legda USA. Good enough, he also sits within the realm of the management of Legda USA as the BOT member. We will also discuss some of the projects he has executed in his forum as the CEO of Lukulu USA. And lastly, some recommendations as to how Legda USA can become a more vibrant organization. Stay tuned. This is Gaza Media. The number one community news. Here comes the man who is in charge of the Kudu USA, Mr. Terence Atten. Good morning and welcome to our weekly community news update. Good morning, Mr. Kumba. Thank you for having me. Yes, Mr. Terence, it's been a while we have not uh, had this kind of interview. Yes, let me dive straight into the very first question that we have here. You have been at the helm of the Kudu USA going to your fourth year, and this is probably your final year as a CEO. Can you just briefly tell our audience your achievement, how far you have gone, and what you hope to accomplish during your last year in office? Yes, so thank you, Mr. Kumba, um, and, and thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to talk to Gaza Media, to talk to our, uh, the BLM and the Kodo community. Um, so in terms of our achievement, we came in 2020 um, uh, when we had the pandemic. Um, and as you know, my theory has always been uh, that leadership is a, a team sport. Uh, our executive is very, very united. Everybody is a contributing factor to everything that we do. So no single person can take credit. Um, and sometimes it's humbling uh, when people give that credit to me, but this is a collective credit. In terms of uh, what we've been able to achieve, um, I believe we've really been able to move uh, the Kudu and move the bank uh, forward. And also like that, because you know, uh, I'm also a board member of Legda. Uh, now, you see, for example, when we came in, we expanded our humanitarian assistance program. And we used to the initial phases, first and second part of the assistance program, which began when I was board chairman of the Kodo. Um, so the third phase, when we came in now as our CEO, um, we expanded the program to include uh, some assistance to communities in the village and also IDPs who were in the Western province, the Western region, sorry, uh, and littoral, and parts of littoral. And while we're providing 
uh, food for those IDPs in uh, uh, the Western region and littoral, we provided uh, uh, money funds for communities, various communities in Fontaine in the bank uh, to help themselves, to help empower themselves. We told them we no longer wanted them to use this money for food. So that money really had significant impact because communities like the new community were able to leverage uh, that fund, that, the funds that we provided to, to improve their water supply, right? To create more uh, water pipes, pipe for, you know. So are, are, you saying, are, are you saying, are you saying under your leadership, you were able to execute some water project in the bank for now? Right, in, in partnership with uh, the new community uh, that choose to use their own humanitarian assistance money uh, for the water supply. Um, we also provided money to help farmers with pesticides, herbicides, to help spray their cocoa. Uh, some of them to also help spray the the um, the different uh, 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 trees and plants around. Um, so since you don't have a lot of manpower now uh, to to treat to clear grass, so they use some of these uh, herbicides to to kill the grass, and this was was really helpful. Um, so yes, Terence, can, uh, can you talk more uh, on the uh, I know uh, on some of the big major project like the hair project that you were able right. to accomplish. Right. So, for example, now the, our flagship project was a project which uh, it's run by the Health and Wellness Committee of the Kuru ESA. We also have the Nibar Medics in Cameroon that manages the health project. And uh, here in the United States, it's led by Dr. Christella, and in Cameroon, it's led by Dr. Asume Etienne. So, we, ran, we, we started these health campaigns where we mobilized volunteers both here in the United States and in Cameroon. And we go to uh, Chan Finger Polyclinic with our partners, Lily Beyond the Horizon Life Bridge uh, uh, International Finger Polyclinic, and then later the Fort Laramie Memory Health of Africa joined. And we went to Chan and organized free health campaigns. Um, we started that two years ago, um, and we would provide uh, medications for people, uh, consultation for people free. And, and everything was free. Um, the last campaign that we had in March, for example, we treated over uh, uh, 1,500 persons in Chang, and we also treated over 1,000 people in Fontaine. And everything is free. We did about 43, we did 43 surgeries. Some of the surgeries, we moved them uh, to Kumbajara Hospital. In, and then in addition, we also had a 90-day uh, follow-up program where all those who have chronic diseases like hypertension and diabetes uh, were, on, were monitored and the doctors. We hired doctors and nurses to continue seeing them for 90 days, making sure they are complying with their medications, making sure we're monitoring their blood sugar and blood uh, pressure levels to see if the health campaign and all our interventions were making a difference. Okay. And that was really big. Yes. Um, Terence, okay, well, wait, maybe we might come back to when, uh, uh, when, uh, along the line. Let me ask you this one. You also sit uh, as the BOT. You are also a member of the BOT, Board of Trustees for Legda USA. You represent the bank founder in that run. What can you say is your main role within the, 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 the run of that leadership or of that Board of Trustees? Right. So I've had the privilege as um, the CEO of the Kodo to represent the Kodo uh, Le Bank Fondam in the board of Legda USA. In our role as a board, it's to assist the executive um, with, you know, budget mobilizing funds, uh, average programs, and helping to do oversight across budgets. Um, I think um, I have been one of the board members who has attended almost all the board meetings. Um, the former CEO, Professor Demano, will testify to that. But I also brought my experience to bear uh, on the organization in terms of organizing activities for them, especially when it comes to the Washington, D.C. area. 
Um, so there's a lot, and then ideas. You know, at the end of the day, organizations strive when good ideas yes. flourish. T- t- the, the reason I, I asked you this question because when you explain some of the project that you have able to uh, execute, even though you have a lot of experience as a community organizer, you specialize in project management, capacity building. Have you, uh, my curiosity is, have you been able to involve some of the board members from other funders? So that because if you are carrying, say, a hair campaign like the one that took place in Chang, it, it has no limit. Any person from the bank or any person from the BLM rather, from Tumatel, Mwangong, the war, etc., they, they came there and they benefit. So my question to you is, when you are doing this project which has no boundary, is to repair them in general, do you engage other fundum president? Yes, I am very answer because to I think we are basically the only fundum organization that really really transcends our fundum. Our projects, you know, the beneficiaries are not limited to the bank. We have a more generous attitude in the bank. The whole campaign, we reach out to Lender USA since I'm a board member and they provided co-funding, $2,000. Um, also to speak to the point of opening up uh, benefits to everybody acting as a one the BLM. When we're doing the pedagogic seminar, as you remember, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Enes Sakumba, mm-hmm. we reach out to the war and brought in the war schools to, the ped- for, to, to, uh, to participate in that pedagogic seminar and funding, co-funding was also provided by the Kunde. So we have been, I think we are the only organization that has conceived programs that will benefit the entire the BLM or health campaign involved was open to everybody. People came from Sota, people came from uh, Foto, uh, the war, from even lower uh, Mundane area and even the Bayani area. Um, so, and we have also tried to encourage like that, to think in this sense, uh, in terms of empowering other fundums, uh, fundum organizations to implement projects that get across, that don't just benefit their people. So, and I think that is really uh, picking up steam. Yes. Because we need to promote one the BLM as much as we also do our own, serve our own, Local population for the founder. Yes, tell us, yeah, you, you when we're discussing, you mentioned about the Washington DC mobilization. Uh, I think we'll have this conversation some other time, but let me throw it out there. Uh, the WDC, which is the mother chapter for Lega USA, has not been very vibrant the way it should be. And uh, I hope my wish is, yeah, seeing you are there in the Maryland, there are some other founder president who are also resident in Maryland, in addition to the to the chapter president, I hope you guys may come together and really put that together. But now, let me move no, forward. Let, let me move forward to this. Say one thing. By July, by the end of July, that will be your final year in office uh, for the for the Kudu USA. I don't know how that applies to your position as the uh, member of the board for Leta USA. But I want to ask you, even though you have tried to answer some of the question, you were there uh, in Maryland, in the uh, bank, uh, which we call in a BLM Maryland Convention, where Agenda, Agenda 28 was adopted to transform the BLM within the five year development plan. What would be your recommendation to really make LEDA become a more vibrant organization? And why not the Kudu and other funders? That can also benefit from your skill. Right. Anyway, to before I get to that question, um, I have a plate that is full. Um, we are trying in like in the Kudo, uh, trying to make sure we have a road that is possible. We're gonna do that project in November. We we're trying to optimize our schools. We have 12 schools now. After three years, when we started from one, uh, we're trying to make sure that the health campaign we expand that to uh, from Junetta so that it can also benefit our the BLM brothers who are from upper upper the BLM. Um, so there are a couple of things that we're really trying to 
uh, to do. We're also trying to buy equipment, uh, road equipment, so that we can do our roads and not be dependent or relying on, 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 on any government. Um, and my expectation is that Legda would also be able to take this, you know, some of these ideas and leverage them, expand that into so that it can benefit, you know, the entire Libyan and other fundums. Um, but I also think that Legda has to probably also try think about uh, its outreach program to be able to convince people why they have to uh, work with Legda, right? What are the, the one big BLM? Mm-hmm. How that is important? I think uh, that really needs to be the focus because if you're able to convince people that something is important to them and it will benefit them, then it is easier to co-op them to be part and parcel of it. And there are many ways to do that, which I think the good thing is I trust the leadership that is there today, just like I trusted uh, Professor Domeno, who was there. We've been lucky to have great people uh, in, in, to lead like that recently. Okay, right? From yes. Professor mm-hmm. Gazan to Professor Domeno, and now to my good friend, Pascal Tiamem, who is phenomenal. I am very confident that he's going to move like that to a better place. And I need to give kudos to the Legda Life, Legda Life folks, the administrators have done a phenomenal job. And we, you know, I am also contributing by encouraging our Lebanon uh, folks to join Legda Life. Uh, so we strengthen that program. Uh, so, you know, I think there's great opportunity and hope for Legda. Okay, uh, yes. Terence, uh, I want to thank you so much. Uh, I will leave you here for now. But uh, I really like uh, to have you back here so that we continue this conversation for some of these key topics, uh, you know, community. So I would like that when you come back next time, we will focus on the role of NGO in community development and capacity building. That's one area that I really want to explore. Let me leave you for now. And uh, again, I want to thank you for uh, calling in this morning. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was uh, that was the CEO of Lukudu USA, Mr. Tem Terence, who is a community organizer, a project manager, and of course, he specialized in capacity building and all of that. It was a wonderful uh, time talking to him. Until then, we'll see you uh, next Saturday morning. Again, this is Gaza Media. My name is Enes Kumba.